Hi, and welcome to Thursday Comics. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. And today we're talking about Journey into Mystery, number 92. I've done it. I've stolen Thor's hammer. Now the Thunder God is at my mercy. The mighty Thor cannot reach his enchanted hammer. Is this to be Loki's final victory? I cannot reach it. Within seconds, all my superpowers will be gone forever. So we got a nice Jack Kirby cover on here with, uh, you know, yet another Return of Loki story. Uh, you know, Loki breaking some chains, some classic, uh, you know, superhero comic imagery. Thor's at his mercy. So uh, what we have here is um, we've lost Jack Kirby uh, in the previous uh, couple issues. And now we've lost... Larry Lieber as well. Uh, the the plot is uh, credited to Stan Lee, the script to R. Burns, the art to Joe Sinnott, and the lettering to M. Epp. This issue sees uh, a nice improvement from Joe Sinnott. It looks like he's getting comfortable with the material and, uh, you know, making uh, the characters his own. It just, you know, the art is just very attractive here and this opening splash is pretty good you know loki menacing thor um while he's holding the hammer now uh although he's holding the hammer in this splash page he does not hold the hammer in the actual body of the story so so far we have not violated the uh only only the worthy may lift thor's hammer we have, I, i'm on the lookout for that though and so this one starts in asgard which is always a good sign for these thor stories i, I like the more asgard focused ones we have Neri, the handmaiden of Fricka, who I'm assuming is Frigga, uh, which would be uh, Thor's mom, I believe, uh, talking to Heimdall and asking for access to the Earth via the Rainbow Bridge. And he says, no, you, you, can't, you can't go on the Rainbow Bridge before I you know, make sure that you're on, on the up and up. Because one time, as we see here, uh, which happened in a previous issue, uh, Loki turned into a little tiny snake and, and snuck by. So I need to make sure that you're not loki in, in disguise and she says no Lo look loki's over there he's chained to a rock and he's like okay yeah sounds good to me now i thought for sure uh she was going to turn into loki she doesn't so loki's there stewing in his juices try trying to figure out a way to get some revenge uh then we cut to uh don blake and jane foster on the earth and we get a, a replay of a plot line that was a couple issues ago uh one of the kirby issues where mob boss got shot and so he comes to dr don blake's office to get some free medical service uh you know at gunpoint and the guys are talking about how after don blake's done they're gonna kill him uh so don blake helps them out and then he says hey thor's outside and they're like huh they turn around he taps his cane and then there he is he's thor uh you know joe Sinnott draws some nice handguns we'll get some nice silhouettes here of, of the handguns uh and then thor you know, takes care of business pretty quick, uh, wraps the guys up in tape, and then attaches it to, to his hammer, throws the the hospital bed with the two criminals, um, throws it to jail, and then that plot line's all t nice and tied up. So, uh, you know, what, that's, that's, that's one thing in this issue. It's very episodic. It's, um, you know, th there's not, the, the plot threads don't sort of extend the whole issue and then get get resolved it's uh you know you got this little episode with these guys and then now we're on to the next episode where thor is working on a movie set uh playing himself thanks thor for agreeing to provide the special effects we need in this viking picture so they have a giant sea monster and then thor flies in to fight it playing himself in the movie i'm assuming oh this is going to be one of those stories like in fantastic four or something where the guy running the movie is, you know, working for Loki or some kind of villain. But no, it's just another little episode in, in this issue. Uh, R. Burns, it, it's almost like he's he's taking um, comic strip style pacing where it's like, you know, we're just looking at a series of comic strips. So this was this was like last week's episode and then now we're on to this week. And then, um, and then af after Thor's done all this stuff, uh, there's an accident on the set. They, they need a special effect. Thor throws his uh, his hammer to, to create an explosion, but instead of coming back, it just keeps going and going and going. You know, Thor can't 
really fly very well without his hammer. So he loses his balance and falls, and the hammer gets drawn all the way to Asgard. And the reason it gets drawn to Asgard is uh, Loki realized that his chains were made of Uru metal, the same metal that Thor's hammer is made of, and he um, gave them like a little magical supercharge to make them extra magnetic and attract uh, Uru. So when, when Thor let go of his hammer, it attracted them, and, and now it's stuck there. Thor, uh, you know, another recurring plot device, Thor prays to Odin. Odin appears. Uh, reaches out, picks Thor up with his hand. I, I, I've never seen this in a Thor comic before. I'm not a fan, but uh, at least it's original. And Thor brings him to Asgard, but tells him, nobody here can really help you, Thor. We're all very busy with, uh, he says, unfortunately, we cannot help you with your quest, for we are each burdened with thousands of tasks of our own. But we all wish you success. Thank you, noble Odin. I shall begin my search immediately. So he's looking for his hammer, uh, he ends up in Loki's uh, forest of evil trees. He karate chops one of the, the trees in half with his hand uh, and makes a, a wooden mallet that he uses to smash the evil trees. Loki says, blast my luck. I forgot how powerful Thor is, even without his magic weapon. He, cre he creates a dragon out of the clouds. Uh, Thor, using his fingertips, cuts a hammer out of the stone, kind of carves it out with his finger, kind of... Again, these, you know, very, there's sort of Superman elements when Kirby's there, but when Kirby leaves, the, the sort of, you know, 50s and 60s Superman elements uh, are off the charts. They're like, it's very, that's, that's very much something Superman would do, you know, uh, weird demonstrations of power. So he, he carves out a hammer with his fingertip and then uses that, that new hammer to fight off this, this dragon. He realizes that the stone he used to make this new hammer isn't any... Ordinary stone, it contains the magic metal, Uru, of which my magic hammer and Loki's chains were both constructed. And so he realizes that if he let, if he throws this, um, it will lead him by magnetic attraction to his real hammer, which it does. Odin, Heimdall, Fricka, I guess that's, uh, that's Frigga there, uh, with her blonde hair sticking out, uh, you know, Thor's mom. Who, who I don't think we ever see referred to as such as any of the, in any of these issues. There is an issue where there's like a flashback and, and it, we see that like Thor's, it's Thor's mom and, and that, you know, she died when, you know, Thor was little. And, but then uh, that's in Jack's notes in the margins, but Stan does not refer to her as um, Thor's mom in, in the actual like printed dialogue. So uh, we'll be on the lookout for that in a future episode. So yeah, Loki's uh, plan is thwarted. Don Blake's back on Earth. Gosh, Doc, take it easy. You could hurt a guy with that rubber hammer. Don't worry, Mr. Jones. Dr. Blake is very experienced in using a mallet. Jane, honey, you don't know the half of it. The art here from Joe Sinnott is, is pretty nice. It's, it's an improvement uh, over, over the previous issue. It's, it, you know, it's not bad at all. In, at, at some points, it kind of reminds me a little bit of John Buscema. There's a Loki face here in particular. This Loki face here uh, makes me think of John Buscema. So yeah, n nice drawing throughout, but um, out, out of all the issues we've read so far, th this one like ha has the worst plot. The, the plot is just not not doing it for me. Again, like I, I thought the thing with these gangsters would have been, you know, tied in, you know, tied in through the whole issue. I thought you know, it just it just needed some some more connective tissue, and and I thought there'd be more of like an interesting confrontation with Loki, and and you know there were plenty of opportunities for Loki to sort of pop up and do some interesting stuff, but he's, you know, kind of just you know, uh, sort of like a you know Republic serial villain, or just kind of like there on the fringes, you know, watching the various uh, you know traps come to fruition. Uh, you know, not 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 a huge fan of of, of the story in this issue, the plot. Uh, the the writing, like the dialogue and stuff, is um, it's not too bad. I mean, the you know, R. Burns, you know, the the dialogue's got a little bit of bounce and a little bit of punch to it, making me think uh, maybe you know R. Burns is is sort of bringing that, or maybe you know, Stan's doing some rewriting. You know, his his uh, dialogue was always very bouncy and punchy. He says, "Then they'll learn I'm not called God of Evil for nothing." And that's uh, is kind of a Stanism. He would write that a lot. You know, they don't call me the God of Thunder for nothing. Or, or sometimes he'd say, "Not for nothing am I called." You know, this not for nothing am I called the God of Thunder. 
I always thought it was funny when like Odin or somebody would be like, not for nothing am I called, you know, the mightiest of the mighty. Because like not for nothing, I think of as sort of like New York slang, like, uh, you know, Baba Booey on the Howard Stern show would say that like, not for nothing, boss, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of funny when you hear like a Norse god saying it. That's Journey into Mystery number 92. And I got to say, if if we were looking at too many more non-Kirby issues, you know, I might have been tempted to tap out. But fortunately, number 93, we have the return of Jack Kirby with the Radioactive Man. So uh, I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. Please join me next Thursday.